Saxon Algebra 1, Lesson 34. In this lesson, we study a greatest common factor. The number 210 has four prime factors as shown here. They are 2, 3, 5, and 7, and they multiply to 210. We call factors that are numbers numerical factors. Some expressions have factors that are letters, and some expressions have both numbers and letters as factors, as does 210xy squared z third. We call the letter factors literal factors, and we use the words algebraic factor as a general term to describe factors that are either numbers or letters or both numbers and letters. Here's a definition. The greatest common factor, or GCF, of two or more terms is the product of all prime algebraic factors common to every term each to the highest power that it occurs in all of the terms. That's quite a mouthful. We're going to have to see what it means through examples. This expression here, 6x squared y squared m squared plus 3xy third m squared plus 3x third y squared can be pulled apart if we factor each of the numbers into its prime factorization and rewrite the variables without exponents. We get this long expression here. It consists of three terms. Now the greatest common factor has to consist of as many factors as possible that belong to each of the terms. Now we look at the numbers first the first term contains a 2 and a 3, but the second term only contains a 3, and likewise for the third term. So as far as the numbers are concerned, the greatest common factor we can use a 3 because there is a 3 in each of the terms. So the numerical part of the greatest common factor is 3. Then we look at the terms again and consider the variables. The first term contains two x's, but the second term contains only one x. The third term contains three x's. The most number of x's we can take from each of the terms that belong to each of the terms is one x. So the greatest common factor consists of a single x there. And we look at the y's. Each of the terms contains at least two y's. We cannot go with more than two y's because the first and third terms only contain two y's. So we include two y's in the greatest common factor. Then we look at the m's. The last term does not contain any m's. So we finished constructing the greatest common factor and we can write that as 3xy squared. Let's look at some more examples. Find the greatest common factor. Example 1, we have two terms here. Again, we write the prime factorization of the numerical parts and we write the variables without the exponents. And we get this long expression. If we look at the numerical parts, each term contains at least two twos. The second term contains only two twos. So we can pull two twos as the numerical part of the greatest common factor. As far as the z's are concerned, the first term contains four of them, but the second only contains three. So we can only use three z's in the greatest common factor. It has to be common to both terms. As far as the m's are concerned, the first term contains two m's, the second contains more than that, so we can only use two m's in the greatest common factor. And then the first term contains only one p, the second term contains two. We can use one p as part of the greatest common factor. So we are taking the greatest number of each factor that belongs to all the terms 
and this is what we have. If we rewrite it, we have 4z to the third m squared p. Example 2. 4x squared y third z minus 8y squared x z squared. Notice that the variables are written in a different order. Let's put them in alphabetical order first. Then we can pull the terms apart. So we have this, and each term contains at least two twos. We cannot use more than two twos as part of the greatest common factor since the first term only has two of them. So the greatest common factor contains two twos multiplied. As far as the x's are concerned, the first term has two of them, but the second term only has one x, so we can only use one x as part of the greatest common factor. As far as y is concerned, the second term only contains two of them, so we can use two y's as the greatest common factor. Each term contains a z, and the first term contains only one z, so we can use a single z as part of the greatest common factor. And if we simplify, we get 4xy squared z. One more example. This is a very short lesson. This is our last example. Here we have three terms. Again, we need to factor the numerical parts into their prime factorization, and we need to write the variables without exponents. So we have this long expression. Now look at the numerical factors. Each term contains at least one two. The first and the third terms contain only one two. So we can use a single two as part of the greatest common factor. The first term contains a three, but the second and the third do not contain a three, so we cannot use a three as part of the greatest common factor. But we can use a five as part of the greatest common factor because each term contains one five. The last term also contains a 7, but the other two terms don't contain a 7. So the numerical part consists of just 2 times 5. Then we look at the x's. First term has 3 x's, second term has 4, third term has 3. 3 is the least number of x's we have here, so we can use 3 x's. And as far as the y's are concerned, the second and third terms contain only one y, so we can use a single y as part of the greatest common factor. And each term contains at least two z's. The middle term has three of them, but that doesn't help us. So we can use two z's as part of the greatest common factor. So here it is. We simplify and we get 10x to the third y z squared. So that's how you find a greatest common factor. You don't necessarily have to write each term in its expanded form as long as you think about what the exponents mean. This is the end of Lesson 34. Your assignment, Problem Set 34, on pages 139 and 140 of your book.